Hello everyone, it's Tracy. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks very much for joining me. Today I'm doing the assembly tutorial for the photo carousel stand. This project has been designed by Nicole Silhouette here on YouTube and I shall link her YouTube channel in the description box below. At the moment, at the time of filming this tutorial, this project is only available as a digital cutting file in Nicole's Etsy store. I do believe though it will be available as a cutting die set very soon and I will link that as soon as it is available. So let's get started on the assembly tutorial. I have the pieces cut out here. I've got a pile on my left and a pile on my right. The pile on the right are the pieces that make up the finial type top of the carousel and the pieces on the left make up the picture frames and the stand. You'll also need six paper drinking straws. To begin with, we'll put the drinking straws and the frame and the stand pieces aside and we'll work on the top finial piece. These are the pieces that you'll need for the top finial piece, with the exception of this round circle piece that I'm trying to pick up. There's eight of these pieces and they need to be glued on top of each other to make a strong, sturdy piece. There's also these eight octagons with the circles in the middle as well and there's eight of those and they'll need to be glued together. So I thought I would do that at the same time. So working with the round circle piece first, all we're going to do is glue them one on top of each other. And the glue I'm using today is Gina K Connect glue. And it is easier to use glue at this point for this particular task rather than using double-sided tape. So taking care when you're applying your glue and attaching the pieces on top of each other, please make sure that the circles are lined up nicely, otherwise your straws will have trouble when you go to position your straws. So just making sure that everything's nice and straight and lined up. And this is the piece for the stand. So that's just pressing that into place now and then I'll put that to the side and start working on the octagon and do the same thing. And with the octagon you do need to make sure that you're lining the circles up properly as well as the octagon sides on the outer edges. So just taking your time making sure they're lined up and pressing them into place one on top of the other. And then I'll set that aside to dry too. And that makes a nice thick sturdy piece. Once we've got those both pieces done, the octagon and the circle, this is where you can test with your straw to make sure everything's lined up properly. And with the octagon it's a more looser fit and with the circle it's a little bit more tighter. And that's like that on purpose. So you can see that that's a bit more firmer to hold and the octagon is a bit looser. So put those pieces aside and we'll move forward with finishing off the top of the finial. So we're going to get the funny pie shaped piece here that looks like it's got a pie piece missing. We're going to remove the release papers off the adhesive. We're going to join the pieces together like so. And I'm going to give it a burnish as well on the inside to make sure that glue gets a good stick. Next we take this funny jaggedy piece and we'll remove the release papers off the backings of the adhesive. First off this tab and we'll join it together. Make sure you line it up correctly. And we'll give it a bit of a burnish as well. It's always a good idea to burnish where your adhesive is, especially when you're using double sided tape. So we'll take the release papers off these larger tabs at the top and it's time to join that other piece we put together previously to those larger tabs and they fit perfectly. So we'll just join one piece first, make sure it gets a good hold and then you can go around and position the other tabs in place on the underneath side using your fingers of your left hand inside underneath to press against so the glue gets a good hold. And you can give that a burnish as well. 
Next, we'll take one of these octagons with the large hole in the middle and we'll position that over the top of those glue tabs. So you'll need to push them together a bit so that it'll fit over the top. Then we'll get one of the tabs the, with the adhesive on, take the backing off the adhesive and just press that first tab down in place, securing it. And then you'll go over to the opposite side, take the backings off that piece of adhesive and press that into place. And this makes sure that that piece, that ring we've just put over the top is in good position and it is straight. Then you can go ahead and take the backings off the other tabs and press them down as well. And it all should be lined up nicely. And we'll give it a bit of a burnish as well to make sure all those adhesive tabs have gotten a good stick. So our top finial piece now is taking shape. So it's looking really good. And now it's time to take that other octagon with the big hole in the center and we're going to glue that right over that end. And that covers up those glue tabs that we just glued down. Take your time to line it up and press it into place. So it covers those glue tabs and gives the lid a bit more strength. Now we're going to take the octagon piece with the holes in it and we're going to glue that to the base of the top or the lid of that carousel. This is a piece that you'll take on and off when you want to change out your photos on your carousel stand. So I'm just applying some glue there and that just goes into place on the bottom there. So taking care to line it up nicely so that the octagon sides are all lined up and you will need to press this into place really, really well because it's nice and thick now and it needs to be because it'll be a piece that you'll take on and off the top of your carousel often. So I'm just giving it a burnish, making sure that glue is getting a good stick. Then we'll move on to our next piece. So we're going to start working with the stand now and we're going to need this piece which is in your digital cutting file. I've gone ahead and fold along the score lines and I've put double sided tape along the glue tab. So I've just removed the release papers and I'm going to join the glue tab to the opposite end. Like so. And with the glue tabs on either end of this piece, you'll need to make sure that you put either your glue or your double sided tape on the inside edge which is this edge that I'm turning over now. So you don't want to put glue on the other side, you want to put it on this side facing up like I'm showing here. Then we'll take that other round piece with the holes in it. And we're going to position that on one of those ends. It doesn't matter which end. And you'll take the release papers off the double sided tape off the tabs. And when you're positioning this, make sure that you're not obscuring any of those holes otherwise the straws won't be able to go through properly. So sorry you can't see at the moment because I'm trying to line it up. And one of my glue tabs gets stuck here before I want it to so I'm just getting my pokey tool just to unstick it and help me realign it back up again. Making sure that none of the holes on the inside are obscured. And I'll show you in a second. I'm just pressing those tabs into place. So when you look through you should be able to see the holes and they shouldn't be obscured in any way. So if your tabs do hang over on where I'm pressing it down now, you can just trim them, which I will actually do that with mine. They're hanging over like a little smidge and it doesn't matter. You just trim them off and it won't affect it at all. And what you can do here to cover those glue tabs is use the designer paper layer, which is the octagon piece with the larger hole in it. That actually fits. And what you need to do is push the glue tabs at the top in a little bit like so and that piece will fit over and down onto cover the glue tabs. You don't really need to do it as it is the underside but you can if you want to. So that's part of our stand done. We now need to do the bottom and you'll need this piece here and there are eight of them. And you can see I've gone ahead and put double sided tape on all the glue tabs and I have folded along the score lines. 
This octagon piece is part of the base and we'll set that aside for the time being. So we'll take the release papers off the glue tabs on one of these pieces and we're going to join another piece to it. These pieces are all identical so it won't matter which one you pick up. Just make sure that you take your time to line it up correctly. I like to start at this bottom tab when I take the release papers off. Attach the neighbour from the bottom first and then work my way up. To me that's just easier. The double sided tape I'm using on this project today is the Sukwang tape. You can also use glue for the entire project if you'd like, that is up to you. I just chose to use the double sided tape just because it's easier for the video tutorials. So take your time, work your way around one tab at a time. And if you didn't want to watch this being put together piece by piece, this particular section, you can fast forward it. That's the beauty of it being on video. But I wanted to leave it all in, in case anybody needed it. It was funny when I was doing this piece, I thought I had finished. I went to join it like that, <laughs> then I realised, oops, I've still got this piece to put on. Now when you're putting this together, you may, when you get to this part here, you may need to finagle it a little bit. It might be a little bit resistant, but you'll get there. And I did try to fasten it from the top, but I found that a bit awkward, so I went back down to the bottom. And that just seemed to fit together better once that bottom was joined, then the other two pieces just, or the other two tabs, just fell into place. So our base of our stand is now taking shape and it's time now to get the center pole and put it through this smaller hole and join them together. Around that smaller hole there are some glue tabs where I had already gone ahead and put the double-sided tape for adhesive but you could leave that off as you have another option for gluing the center pole through this piece. So we get the centre pole and we put it the circle side down onto the work surface. And then we're going to put that base piece over the top of the centre pole through that smaller hole and push it down a fair way. Then we're going to turn it over onto the work surface like so, so that that centre pole is pushed down flush with the work surface. And the reason why we do that is the glue tabs eventually will be stuck to the base octagon when we put the base piece on. So I'm going to turn that back over carefully and this is where if you didn't put the double sided tape on those glue tabs you could just use hot glue to adhere those glue tabs to the centre pole. I left my double sided tape on so now I'm just removing the release papers from those glue tabs and in doing that I've knocked it out of alignment so I'm just turning it back over onto my work surface and pushing that centre pole down again so that it's flush with the work surface. And that's the ideal position for when it's all glued together when we close this up. So I'm turning it over now and I'm carefully pushing my glue tabs into place around the centre pole. And then pushing it back down, making sure it's straight and aligned. And again, as I said, it actually would be easier to use hot glue here. So I'm just making sure that those glue tabs on the uh, up the top there are getting a good hold. I'm just moving the other glue tabs out of the way so I can get my finger in there. Making sure they're getting a good hold. But again, as I said, it wouldn't be much easier to use hot glue here. You can also see I've turned those glue tabs out from that centre pole and now the other glue tabs are exposed, uh, well, are facing up as well. So we'll end up now taking the backings off all of those glue tabs and we're going to put this bottom octagon into place. 
So we're going to attach that to one of those glue tabs and then go to the opposite side to that glue tab and press that into place. And when you do it this way, all of the glue tabs then do line up nicely with those edge pieces of the octagon. And you can just press them into place and they line up nicely. And that closes the bottom of our base up nicely. So I'm just using my pokey tool here. It was a little bit crooked. So I'm just pulling it apart and then pressing it into place. And that's the base of our carousel stand done. So I'm just pressing it down onto my work surface. Again, putting a little bit of extra pressure onto the center pole there, making sure that, that the glue tabs on the bottom of that are getting a good stick to that base octagon piece. And there's our stand. So I'll put that to side now and we'll start working on the picture frames. And you will need this piece with the two windows in it, the rectangle with the tabs, the rectangle that has no tabs, these two strip pieces, and these two, sorry, four little tiny corner pieces. So putting the window pieces and the strip pieces to the side, we're going to work on the rectangle with the tabs and also these smaller pieces. We take the backings off and they become little L shapes like this. And we're going to attach these to this rectangle with these glue tabs. But where we're going to position them is in between the score lines. And it doesn't matter whether you put it on this side or this side. As long as each corner has one. And this helps put the corners together nicely and it helps form a nice shape to this rectangle box. It kind of makes a little tray. So I'm just putting all those in position. And then when we join it together, you pull the sides up and they attach to those little corner L's that we just put in. And you can see that I'd already gone ahead and folded this piece along the score lines and put double sided tape along the glue tab. So the score lines between the glue tab and that rectangle in the center is where you put those corner pieces and then this other rectangle gets put into position on those glue tabs. So I'm just taking the release papers off and lining it up on the short end first. Making sure the glue gets a good stick and then I'll take the release paper off the opposite end and press that end into place, lining it up, making sure it's straight and even. And then taking the release papers off the side pieces. A little bit trickier, that's why I'm using my pokey tool. Because it's basically in position ready for me. And when I go over to the other side, I just press it so that it opens a little bit so I can get my pokey tool in better. And then pressing it down into place. And that makes a little rectangle tray with a lid type of thing. I don't really know what to call that. <laughs> then we take this piece with the two windows and that gets folded like that. And you'll work with this larger piece here. You'll work with that to your left. And what we'll do is we'll get a stylus and we're going to bruise the fibers of this so that we can then give it some shape because we need to curve it. And by doing this, it just helps the paper curve easier. So you can rub it between your hands if you like. You can run it down your desk if you like. I actually got one of the straws and wrapped it around and used that to make the curved shape. And I found that to be the best way after I had bruised the fibers of the paper. Then we will take, so you can see there that's nice and curved. Then 
Then we'll take one of the shorter one of these pieces here, the one with the two tabs on the end, and we'll take the release paper off one side and we're going to position it along the bottom edge of this frame, taking care to line it up between the two score lines that are along either side of that opening of the window and that the tabs on the ends will fold in. So I'm just pressing that into place and it looks like that. With the longer piece here, we'll take the release paper off and that goes against the side where the curve is lined up against the score line there. So I'm just making sure that that's lined up against the score line nicely. I'm just manoeuvring it around so I've got a better view and pressing it down into place. Then I'm going to fold the little tab in, take the release paper off that and off the other end. And that piece will fold up and attach to that side piece there. And then this one will attach to that other strip. And what we're doing is we're making a little track for this little rectangle, this rectangle box or tray or whatever. And then that other side piece will come over like that and get affixed. But we won't do that just yet. We'll take the release papers off the adhesive here along the bottom edge and this side edge here. And close this shape up. Taking care to line it up. Along that edge and along that edge as well. And pressing it into place. And you can get your fingers in there to press that into place. Now along that edge there is where you'll put your adhesive on the inside, not the outside. And it's a little bit tricky to put this adhesive edge against the side of the frame that we just put together. So I end up getting one of the straws and putting it inside like how it's going to be when it's finished. And by doing that it actually helps this glue tab get into position against the edge of that inside frame. So I hope that makes sense. And once that's stuck down, I'll remove the straw. And then we can put that rectangle tray or frame or box, whatever it is, into the track that we made for it. And that's how you can change out your photos, is you'll attach them to that rectangle. You'll go ahead now and you'll make another five of those in the same way I've just showed you. And it's time to put this together. So I'm putting the six straws in through those gaps that we've left. And we're going to affix it into the stand through those circles. And it's a nice firm fit and they fit in there nicely. And then you'll put the top piece on, which is there to my left. You will need to finagle it a little bit and I couldn't manage to do it properly whilst I was filming. It took me ages. <laughs> so I've just cut it so that you can just see it just slipping on nicely there. It does fit nicely. I was just a fumble fingers trying to get it on for the video didn't matter how many times I filmed it I couldn't do it properly <laughs> but as soon as the camera was off me just slipped on nicely each time so that's our carousel stand done it just needs to be decorated now and those photo frames flip around quite nicely on their own and you could have your photos displayed any way you like So to change the photos out, you do take this top piece off, which I'll show in a second. Take that off, and then you pull out one of those rectangles and you attach your photos to either side and then slide it back down in. And then put your top piece back on. Again, I was struggling. <laughs> Just couldn't do it for love nor money on the video, but without videoing myself, I was fine.
So here is my one that I've made that's all decorated. And the papers I used were from Kaisercraft. And this is the Everlasting Collection and this sheet is called Blushing. And it has the flowers on one side and that diamond pattern on the other. I used flowers from Kaisercraft also and you can see I've decorated with some pearls and some ribbon along the base. And I like the way that you can manoeuvre these frames any way you like. I will show you the paper collection at the end as I'm signing off. And this has been made for a lady that I met on retreat who's having a baby girl. I think she's going to put her baby photos in it, which will be lovely. And I am going to make another one for my craft room. So that's my tutorial finished for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching and that you feel inspired to make one of these photo carousel stands yourself. They're not that terribly hard to make and they could be decorated in any style, theme or for any occasion that you like. Don't forget to check the description box down below for the links that I have previously mentioned. Here's that paper I was telling you about from Kaisercraft. Everlasting is the collection and blushing is this sheet. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would really love that too. Thanks very much for watching today. Have a great day and until next time, it's bye for now.